Welcome to How to Do Technical Analysis, Episode 2, Trading View Tips and Tricks. Today, I'll be showing you some ways to speed up doing your technical analysis right here in TradingView. And if you haven't already seen Episode 1, there will be a link below, which will help you get to the starting point of setting up your TradingView account. Now, some of these TradingView tips and tricks may require a premium account, which means you will have to sign up, but TradingView does also offer a free version that will let you get started. I also have an affiliate link down below, and if you click on my link and sign up to TradingView, you will get a 30 dollar sign up bonus which will help you get started you'll be able to click on that link in the description of this video and the comment section all right so first things first we have a chart here of the s p 500 spy etf and the first thing we want to do is add some indicators so we're going to go to the top of the screen and click on this button that says indicators once we click on that it's going to allow us to search for indicators and the first one i want to add is rsi which stands for the relative strength index and if i click on the first thing that pops up it will instantly add that to our chart and then we can close out of this box. Now down below, I wanna customize the way this looks. So the way I'm going to do that is by clicking on the gear in the top left of the RSI box that says settings, and that is going to open this menu here. So to tailor this to my preferences, I'm going to remove the moving average. I'm going to click on this button for the color of the RSI. I'm going to change it to white. And then I'm going to come down here to the RSI upper band, and I wanna turn that red because I want that to show up as overbought. And I'm going to click on this dashed line and change that to dotted line. For the middle of the band, I'm going to have that show up as the yellow color. I'm going to maximize the opacity of that to 100% and also change it over to dotted line. And then for the lower band of the RSI, I'm going to turn that to green to tell us that we're oversold. And I'm also going to change that to the dotted line as well. And then I'm going to uncheck the button that says RSI background fill and then hit OK in the bottom right of the screen. And you can see now I have my RSI indicator at the bottom of the chart. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna add another indicator and I'm going to click at the top of the screen yet again. And this time I'm going to type the word squeeze and I want to click on the first thing that pops up called the squeeze momentum indicator by Lazy Bear. Once I do that, I can exit out yet again. And here I simply need to go to the settings for the squeeze indicator because I'm using the black background and I need to change this color one here and I'm going to change it to red and I'm going to make it a little bit thicker so it's easier to see. And then I'm going to hit OK in the bottom right of the screen. So now I have a chart of SPY with the price action above. I have my RSI indicator and I also have my squeeze indicator. Now the first trick I wanna go over if I ever want to hide my indicators, I simply need to double click anywhere on the screen with the price action and my indicators will instantly be hidden if I just wanna focus on price action. To bring them back, I simply double click yet again and they will appear at the bottom of the screen once more. Now I can position the size of the screen by dragging on the box above or below and I can make those boxes smaller or larger to fit my preference. So feel free to change the sizes of the indicators however you feel fit. The next thing I wanna do under indicators is I wanna add the volume because I simply want to have the option to see how much volume is being traded each and every day. And at the top left of the screen, if I hit the hide button right next to volume, I can hide that at any point. So next I wanna add some moving averages and I can simply type MA and moving average will pop up right away. And I want to add three moving averages, so I'm going to click on this three times and then I'll hit the X in the top right of the screen. These moving averages are now at the top left and I can change the settings by clicking on the gearbox. And then I can come in here and I can change the color and I can also change the length of the moving average by going to inputs. And for this one, I want the length to be a 20 period moving average and then I'm going to hit OK. Next, I go to the next moving average and I'm going to change this length to a 50 period moving average and then I'm going to go to the style and I'm going to change the color to yellow. Once I'm done with that, I hit OK and then I'll go to my final moving average in the settings. I wanna make this one a 200 period moving average and I'm going to go to the style and change the color to red. I can hit OK and now you can see on my screen I have all three moving averages, my RSI and my squeeze indicator. So these are just some indicators we'll talk about using today and obviously you can add any that you see fit. You can also add things like Bollinger Bands and MACD but today we're just going to focus on these. All right, the next trick I want to show you is in the top left of the screen, you can see I have all of these different time intervals and this is very easy to adjust by clicking on this arrow to the right of them and any time frame you hit the star next to will show up in your quick bar. So for example, if I take off the one minute, the 15 minute and the 30 minute, you can see they are no longer on my quick bar. And if I want them back, I can simply click the star next to those and they will appear once more on the chart. Now, if you have the premium account, you can also scroll all the way to the bottom and you can add a custom time frame. So for example, if I want 65 minute candles, I type 65, I click add, 
and then 65 minutes will now appear on the list and I can hit a star next to that and it'll now be on my favorite bar. So this will allow me while I'm doing technical analysis to quickly flip between time frames, which is very helpful to speed up your analysis if you are looking at multi time frame analysis. Another trick if you want to quickly switch to a different indicator, you simply just need to start typing on your keyboard. So right now, if I want to look at the triple Q's, I will just type Q, Q, Q and then hit enter and I can quickly flip from spy over to the triple Q's. If I want to go back to spy, I could just type spy on my keyboard and hit enter and I'm instantly right back over to the S&P 500. Now, one thing that's very important if you're doing multiple time frame analysis is you sometimes will want to draw lines on your chart that will go only on the daily chart. And I'm going to show you very quickly how you can do that. So let's say I want to add a resistance level at the previous daily high. If I hold alt on my keyboard and then I press the H button, I will instantly get a horizontal line right there at that level where I currently had my crosshair. I can do that one more time down here near the support. I hold the alt key on my keyboard and press H and I instantly get another horizontal line. Now when you're doing multiple time frame analysis, it can get very messy on your chart if you have too many lines. So if I double click on any of these lines, it will instantly open up the settings. And if I go over to the visibility tab, you can see here that I only have checked on the days, which means this line will only show up on the daily chart. So if I hit OK and I go over to the weekly chart, you can see I have no lines on the chart. And if I go over to the hourly chart, I still don't have any lines on that chart. Now, if I go back to the daily chart and let's say I want this line to show up on the weekly and hourly chart, I simply double click it, go to visibility, and then I can click weeks, hours and days. And now when I hit OK and I go over to the weekly chart, that line will still be there. And if I go over to the hourly chart, we have the same line on the chart. So now I can take that daily level that I put the horizontal line at and show it on any time frame I want. So I'm going to simply go back and uncheck the others because for this example, I only want the line to show up on the daily chart. Now you can do the same exact thing with vertical lines. If you have any reason to mark some point in time, you can hold the alt key on your keyboard and press the V button and that will instantly put vertical lines on your chart. And again, you can double click those and select any time frame you want them to appear on. So feel free to experiment with that when you're adding your support and resistance lines. Now, as far as style goes, if you double click on your lines, you can go to the style and you can change any color you want. So for example, I can go to style, I can change this to red, and then I can also click on here and make it a dotted line and I can get a little bit of a different look on the line to fit my preference. Feel free to experiment with any color and any line type you want and just find whatever fits your preference best. Now, another trick I want you to be aware of is your quick bar, which I currently have hidden off the screen, but anything that you go into the settings over here and you put a star next to will instantly appear down here on your quick bar. So for example, if I want to add this arrow right here, I simply click on the star and then it instantly appears on my quick bar. So now I have quick access to it and I can find these things a lot quicker. This will really help you speed up your analysis if you put everything you use most commonly right here on your quick bar. And for me, I just like to keep this at the bottom of the screen so I can easily find it when I'm ready to click on something. Another great trick is if you just want to quickly measure something right here on the chart, if you simply hold down the shift key on your keyboard where you want to start measuring from, and then you left click once, and as you're holding shift anywhere you drag, it will show you exactly what percent move that was, how many days across the screen you are moving, and it'll also show you other things like how much volume, how many bars, and how many days. This is very helpful when you wanna quickly measure a move on your chart without going into some other tool and doing a lot of clicking. Now, if I put my cursor at the top of a price move and then I drag down while holding shift, I can get the same exact information but in the negative direction. So this is very useful way to measure moves while you're looking at your charts. Now, when you're drawing trend lines, I like to use the extended line tool, which you can see up here in the left of your screen. It is simply called extended line right here at the lines, and that will extend a line any two points you click across the screen so that you can always see where that point will interact with price action in the future. Now, when you're drawing the extended line, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to get the exact point on the candle. So one tip I have for you there is simply hold the control key while you're on that candle and you will instantly go to magnetic mode and then you can get the low points of those candles very quickly. You can see how it's snapping to any candle I go to while I'm holding the control key. It's simply snapping to any point on that candle that I'm putting my crosshair close to so that I get the exact low or high that I'm looking for. If I let go of the control key, I can put this point anywhere I want. And as soon as I hold control, it'll start snapping into magnet mode yet again. So this makes it very simple to get very quick trend lines with very precise accuracy at the highs and the lows of the candlesticks. Next, I want to talk about price alerts because sometimes you want to buy a specific stock or sell it at an exact price level, but you're not always going to be staring at your chart. So let's just say I want to set a price alert and I want to know when SPY hits this upper resistance right here at this level at 416.85. There's two ways to do that. And one way is simply just right click on that line 
and then go to the add alert on horizontal line and I can simply tell it when it crosses that horizontal line to send me an alert. I can go over to notifications and I can tell it to notify me on the app, send me an email, play a sign, and I can even have it text me by typing in a phone number down here at the bottom. Once I hit okay, you're going to see a bell showing up on that line to tell you there is an alert on that horizontal line. And then anytime price reaches that level, I will instantly be alerted. I can remove it by right clicking yet again, going to edit horizontal line alert, and then I can hit the trash can button in the bottom left of the screen and then tell it I want to delete that alert and I will no longer have an alert on that level. The other way to put the alert is simply right click anywhere on the screen and then go down here to say add alert and you can use the shortcut of holding the alt key and pressing A and then I can simply type that price 416.85 and then hitting create and now the alert will show up at the right of my screen and it'll tell me when price reaches that level so that I have time to react. This is a very important feature to use as a swing trader because sometimes you're not looking at your chart and some stock you are tracking reaches a buy level or a sell level and that will instantly send you alert so that you're not always having to stare at your charts and notice when something happens, you'll simply get alerted and then you can react to it. Now another tip is if you're doing extended hours trading and you go over to an hourly chart, if you look at the bottom right of the screen, there's going to be this button down here that I currently have that says RTH and that is going to be your session and at any time you can change that over to extended trading hours and this is going to give you those pre-market and aftermarket candles that if you are trading in those time frames you will want to see those candles now most of the time when I'm doing technical analysis I only look at open market hours which is called the regular trading hours and that's why I currently have that selected but if you are doing any after hours or pre-market trading that is a good way to show those candlesticks now if you go back over to the daily chart and in the bottom right of your screen at any point you can switch over to a log scale chart by simply clicking on the button in the bottom right that says log and this is very good if you're doing large time frame macro analysis and you need to see percentage moves instead of linear scale this is really going to make these macro charts much easier to read and give you much better accurate technical analysis you can see if i take off the log chart things can get out of control and look very parabolic but then once I turn on the log chart, things look a lot more natural because the percentage moves are much more realistic over many, many years of data. So usually when I'm doing everyday analysis, I have the log button off because a linear scale will work just fine. But if you ever find yourself looking over decades of data, do make sure you're clicking that log button. Now, another tip I talked about changing tickers by simply typing another ticker. You can also do that with time frames. So let's say I'm looking at SPY and I decide I want to look at a 10 minute chart. I can just type one zero on my keyboard and hit enter and I'm instantly looking at a 10 minute chart. I can do the same thing with hours, but I will have to put an H. So if I type two, it's instantly going to assume I want two minutes. And then if I add an H, then it will update to two hours. You could do the same thing with months. For example, if I want to look at a quarterly chart, I can type 3M and it'll instantly go to a three month candle. So feel free to do that if you have some time frames you don't want to add to your hot bar, but you do look at often. And I can go to 1D to go right back to the daily chart. So that's just another quick way to hop between time frames to really help you speed up your analysis. Also in the bottom left of your screen, you can see this button down here that says go to and the hot key for that is going to be holding alt and pressing G. And this is going to allow you to jump to any time frame in history. So for example, if I want to go back to 2008, I simply type the date of when I want to see on the chart, I hit go to, and then I'm instantly looking at that exact date on the chart without having to do a lot of scrolling and a lot of searching. If at any point I want to jump back to where I was looking at in the bottom left of my screen, I can simply hit year to date and I will instantly jump back to the candles that are only contained within the current trading year. I can do this with yearly charts, I can do this with five year charts, and I can even click all to try to fit all of the data on the chart. So feel free to use that to help you hop around different time frames quickly. And then finally, the last tip for this video, if we just look at our indicators yet again by double clicking, and then quickly we'll jump over to a chart of Tesla. I do wanna show you another trick to help you find some RSI divergences on your chart and when you are looking at price and RSI, sometimes you can identify bottoms and tops by looking for divergences. A good way to do this is by using the trend line tool, which you can find over here in the top left of the screen. Click trend line. And when you're looking at RSI, you can click down here and you can draw your trend lines. And then on your chart, you can pair up the price action with another trend line. And if you're ever getting price going lower as RSI is going higher, you can quickly identify that a lot easier if you have your trend lines drawn on the chart. So in this example, when Tesla was trading down here right around $108, we were getting bullish RSI divergence. And this is a very easy way to identify relative strength increasing 
as price action is looking weaker, which tells us we could be near a bottom and due for a balance. Just like I said with the lines on the price channel, you can click on here and you can go to visibility, and this will allow you to remove the lines from showing up on other time frames. So if we simply wanna look at RSI divergences on the daily chart, we just make sure we have days selected, and then when we hit okay, and we go over to the weekly chart, we will not see that same line on the RSI, which will help our chart stay a lot cleaner. You can see our other trend line did stay on the chart, so we can simply double click it, uncheck weeks, and now it's off the chart, so we're keeping things a lot cleaner. This is very important to keep your charts clean so that when you're doing multi time frame analysis, you're not dealing with a mess. So I don't wanna make this video too long, but I did wanna go over some very important tips and tricks that will help you speed up doing your technical analysis. And remember, if you like this kind of content, let me know by smashing that like button and commenting down below that you would like to see more of this and I will keep the content coming. Also remember, some of these will require a premium account and you can get a $30 sign up bonus if you click on my affiliate link below. So if you wanna utilize some of these tips and tricks and you're signing up for TradingView, click on the link you're going to find in the description of this video and down in the comment section. So I hope you all enjoyed this educational video and I thank you for watching it. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.